Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to NBA Got Game TV. And like always, thanks for tuning in. Before we get to today's episode, I got a little reminder for you guys. I got a new channel called BTM, the Basketball Time Machine, which is basically a podcast with me and former NBA players from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and the early 2000s. So if you guys want to support me, just check out the link underneath the video. I would really appreciate a sub. And let's get into today's video. Many NBA fans consider the 1984 draft class to be the best in NBA history. And you can make a clear case for it. A draft class that had many legends, Hall of Famers, and NBA superstars. So let's take a look at the best players of that draft class. We're going to start off our list with the number one draft pick of the 1984 draft class, Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon. In an era that was dominated by bigs, the grand prize of that draft class was Hakeem. A future MVP and a two-time champion, Hakeem Olajuwon was one of the best players to ever play the game. In my personal opinion, I believe Hakeem is the best center to ever play the game. Yes, ever. Hakeem Olajuwon, born in Lagos, Nigeria, first saw basketball at age 15. But Olajuwon's natural talent was to make him arguably the NBA's premier center of the 1990s. He enrolled as a raw talent at the University of Houston, leading the Cougars to two trips to the NCAA Final Four and earning him the top spot in the 1984 NBA Draft. The seven-foot Olajuwon teamed with seven-foot-four Ralph Sampson as the so-called Twin Towers with the Houston Rockets. The two led the Rockets to the 1986 NBA Finals, falling short to the Boston Celtics. Though posting impressive numbers throughout his career, Elijah Wan began to peak at age 30. He led the Rockets to two consecutive championships, defeating Patrick Ewing and the New York Knicks in 1994 and Shaquille O'Neal and the Orlando Magic in 1995. Elijah Wan's remarkable career has been a study in faith and perseverance. He needed both in the 1994 NBA playoffs when the Rockets repeatedly had their backs against the wall. But Akeem's determination carried his team to the top. He easily gets away from Lewis. He has been unstoppable. And the Houston Rockets, led by Akeem Olajuwon, are the world champions of 1994. It took them 10 years, but Akeem finally has won the big one. <laughs> Looking to do it all over again the next year, Houston defied the odds and returned to the finals. Going head-to-head -head against Shaq and the Orlando Magic, Akeem was again remarkable. The big men have battled here tonight. Beautiful move. He puts it up. Under him up. Get him. Get him. Get him by Akeem. A lot of things enter into winning the championship, but I, I without a doubt think he's carried that team both years. If I have to sum up Akeem's performance, I'd have to say it's legendary. It's something that people will talk about for many years and is uh, something I'll remember for the rest of my life. And the next player on our list needs no introduction, Michael Air Jordan. The third pick of the 1984 NBA Draft is considered to be the best player to ever play the game. And yes, I believe the same. We're talking about a six-time NBA champion, an MVP, a finals MVP, a scoring champ, a defensive player of the year, you name it, the list goes on and on and on. When Michael Jordan first came to Chicago, he brought with him a ray of hope for lots of fans. Chicago was a city in need of a hero. Michael Jordan fulfilled that role and then some. Michael Jordan. He makes the impossible look ordinary. The first thing that jumps out at the morning house is his competitiveness. He had to put up spectacular numbers. But he also, in his own mind, recognized that the fans came to see him do something spectacular every single game. Jordan off the spin to the scoop. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hello! That's worth the price of admission in itself. We marveled at his skills, but the thing that we that really, you know, made him stick out was that his determination and his will to keep to keep coming at you and never stop. You know, you'd root for a guy to have a big game, and, uh, maybe a 30, 40 point game, and you sit there and root for him. But to see this guy do it every night. And that 
was what stood out the most uh, to any player I've ever seen. Michael was a guy who, uh, you know, he wanted to win. Uh, he wanted to achieve that goal. And uh, he, he was a guy that you could see step up to a level, a certain level, to, to help his team win. The Chicago Bulls have won their first ever NBA championship. One of the greatest moments in playoff history was Chicago Bulls versus Portland Trailblazers. And he hit so many threes that he looked to uh, score a table and said, like, oh, I can't shoot? Okay, watch this. When you look at him, every big game, every big moment, no matter if he has the flu or anything, he's going to deliver. Out of two, out of one, here's Jordan. To me, he was the most fundamentally sound basketball player I had ever seen. You know, and he was the first guy that I had seen who was super athletic to be fundamentally sound. You can find a guy as quick as him, but he wouldn't be as strong as him. You can find a guy as big as him, but he wouldn't be as quick as him. You know, so it, it was tough to get power and quickness and strength all together. To me, realistically, it's probably the closest thing you could ever come to a perfect physique basketball-wise. In my opinion, the best basketball player ever, but uh, probably more importantly, the best competitor ever. Feel it, Tony, feel it! We are. Right. We got him. Come on, I'll give you a jump shot right now. I'll give you a jump shot, shoot it. Michael had a way of exciting a crowd like no other player ever been around. The inbound pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Go The Bulls win it! They win it! Jordan trying to shake oh, off starts. Oh, oh, what a move by Jordan! It counts. We have a foul. Jordan. Oh, a spectacular move by Michael Jordan. The thing about us is that we helped each other out. We always covered each other on the defensive end. And myself and Michael, we spent most of our careers trying to get steals and came away with quite a few of them, lost out on a few, but it was a, it was a challenge for us every game to go out and try to get steals, get easy baskets, and, uh, you know, we would look out for each other. We would have to cover each other's butt at times when we went for steals. Scotty hands to Mike. What a sensational feed to Pippen. Pippen asked Jordan, there's the feed. We all say, this is the guy, he's the best, and, uh, we say it with great pride and we say it with great honor uh, to have played and competed against him. It was really uh, fun to play against him. He was so competitive and uh, nobody wants to win more than that guy. 17 seconds from game seven or from championship number six. Jordan, open, Chicago with the lead! I think Michael has uh, you know, as good a legacy as anybody who's played any sport. Uh, because he loved the game, had a passion for it, played it at the highest level, won at the highest level a number of times, committed himself to the game in, in the Olympics and in his country, and continues to commit to teaching the game. You can't play this game of basketball and not know who Michael Jordan is, who Michael Jordan was, and what Michael Jordan meant to this league. And the next player on our list is Sir Charles Barkley, probably the best undersized power forward to ever play the game. A guy that could average 25 points, 14 rebounds, and simply intimidate the opponents. Nowadays, Sir Charles is more known for NBA TV, but in his playing days, that guy was bad. We don't anticipate any problems with Charles Barkley. We think we know who he is as a person. Lionel says, we better go get us a Charles Barkley. Lionel, we got Charles Barkley. I am a member of the Phoenix Suns, and I, I am happy. I think for me, a change was needed. He needed a new, a new situation, and he got it. And he's going where he wanted to go. This is by his choice. He wanted Phoenix. I think uh, this is a great opportunity for me. I want to thank Mr. Colangelo, Kaiden, Coach Westfall. Got to get used to saying that. He gave that team and this city and the state exactly what, you know, is exactly a perfect fit for, for the time. And this year, you've had a season, I guess you would say, 
that if you were looking for what an MVP season is, your season this year is a role model for an MVP season. The night he is going to win the MVP, okay, we go to my bar. It was confirmed that Charles was going to win the MVP. So I got on the mic, I stand on the bar, get the mic, and I announce that Charles uh, Barkley, before anybody even knows it, has just won the MVP of the league. And the place goes nuts, and we do a little spotlight on Charles, and drinks all around. Just one of those, you know, iconic nights that a kid from Traverse City, Michigan, now he's standing on his own bar, uh, announcing uh, his teammate, who's the, the MVP of the whole NBA. It's pretty cool when you think about it. But from day one here, they embraced me. They treated me great. Uh, one of the reasons I still live here today is because the fans were fantastic to me. Up to Miguel Knight. Fast red Suns. The Barkley. Right up the and score. Nice thing to gives it off the break by the Suns. Barkley was a dominant player. Uh, extremely dominant in, in the post area. He was one of the best and most talented players that's ever played the game of basketball in this history. Charles had this you know, magnetism about him, and uh, he was very confident. Who wouldn't want to play with a guy like Charles? He wasn't going to lose. I mean, he would take everybody on his back and say, I'm going to get you the promised land. Barkley's Barkley. I don't think he's 6'3". He was just one of those rare players that size didn't matter. It was just determination. Rebound, Barkley. He battles, he shoots, he scores. Sir Charles! I mean, he would take on Goliath. I mean, he was just, had that bravado about him. So Charles, uh, he, he was unbelievable what he accomplished for his size. Charles Barkley is probably one of the greatest power forwards of all time, for sure. Uh, because of his skill set, uh, he was still able to dominate inside the paint. His rebounding is, is second to none. I mean, this guy was just a beast on the boards. To be only 6'7 or so and be able to snag 20 rebounds, and you know, on a nightly basis, it seemed like it was incredible. Charles was, was a different kind of competitor. He wanted to destroy you. I mean, he was, he was a fun guy and he was super off the floor, a great guy to be around, but such a competitor on the floor, and, and there was nothing that he couldn't do on the basketball court. Here's the lob for Barkley, goes up and jams! Oh, beautiful alley oop for Sir Charles! He could get on a roll when the team's down, and he can create. A 10 0 run by himself. And we knew we had a superstar. And not only a superstar, we had a person who could sway the officials one way or the other by his aggressiveness, by his physicality. And, and that was unheard of besides Carl Malone in the Western Conference. He was so genuine. He'd give you the shirt off his back. A uh, great teammate. Cared about winning more than anybody I've ever played with as far as when the game started. Hated the practice. Was the worst practice player in the world. He was the best basketball player I'd ever played with. I'm not saying he's the best basketball player ever, but the one I played with, he was the best basketball player I'd ever played with. And I would have to really think long and hard to think of any player that played an entire season that year or any other year with more determination to win than Charles Barkley. Barkley dish off to Sabamos, back to Barkley, and a nice give and go. Barkley goes in for the chain. He'd always believed in himself, but I, I think that for him to win the MVP over Michael Jordan is something that legitimized his career in a way that uh, probably more so than anything else. And he was that good. I mean, he was good enough to win an MVP over Michael Jordan. And he was good enough to outplay probably the greatest power forward of all time, Carl Malone, uh, whenever they played against each other that year. For me, that year, we had the best player in the league. Charles was the best player, he was MVP, but above and beyond that, he was the best player in the league that year. You led your team in assists, you led them in rebounds, you led them in points, and you led them to the best record in the NBA. The fans here and around America join me in congratulating you, Charles Barclay, the 1992-93 National Basketball Association Most Valuable Player. Congratulations. He had a year for the ages. Have a front row seat to it and have my seat belt buckled up and, and go for the ride along with Charles that year. It was, it was one of the great joys of my life. 
And the next player on our list is not a Hall of Famer, but still a pretty damn good player. We're talking about Sam Perkins, a guy that played 1,286 games in the NBA and putting up more than 15,000 points in his career. He played for the Dallas Mavericks, the Los Angeles Lakers, the Seattle Supersonics, and the Indiana Pacers. And Perkins was known to be one of the first bigs to shoot a three-pointer. Since then, he's been a three-point threat, and in one game last season, he hit seven for seven. Hey, tonight, he's doing a pretty good impression of a shooting guard. And the next player on our list is John Stockton, a player that was literally unknown before the NBA draft, but who later became the number one assist all-time leader. John Stockton was a true definition of a pass-first point guard, a great defender, I think he's still number one in all-time steals. That guy is without a doubt one of the best point guards to ever play in the NBA. The Utah Jazz select John Stockton of Gonzaga University. John Stockton, a surprise here at the Feld Forum because his name uh, certainly uh, not on the, the lips of uh, the fans here in New York. Making free throws in a clutch situation requires a cool head, a steady hand, and nerves of steel. Qualities that are possessed in abundance by one of the greatest point guards in NBA history, John Stockton of the Utah Jazz. During his brilliant career, Stockton has helped Utah become one of the NBA's elite teams. But in the 1999 playoffs, Stockton and the veteran Jazz faced enormous pressure from the upstart Sacramento Kings, who threatened to send Utah to a rare first round exit. Jazz needing a comeback to keep their season alive, it was the kind of challenge Stockton had answered time and time again. The kind he had prepared for since his childhood in Spokane, Washington, when he first kindled his competitive fire. John has a great memory for his youth, and uh, you know he, he just assumed not lose to anybody in anything, whether that's playing pool in the basement or, or basketball uh, on a Sunday afternoon. John would develop into one of basketball's top floor generals. And in the heat of every battle, he would display his cool style of leadership, directing the Jazz with composure and firm control. I don't think John looks at pressure. I think he looks at the game, in my opinion. After Ben Ryan, he looks at it just having fun playing. And that's what it should be. I mean, it's supposed to be fun. Stop. Look for Malone underneath. Jordan the air. That shot a beautiful play by Stockton. Oh, what a play. I never saw a guy come out and play with the tenacity he plays with. He would have been a great jet pilot in World War II. Unbelievable! Carry the Jazz on his six foot three. The part I enjoy is trying to win and doing whatever it takes to win and I try to stay focused on what my job is out there. It's a simple game uh, and, it's, and it's a great game when there's a, an intensity and a willingness to uh, bring your lunch pail with you every day and go to work. Stockton has earned a place in history as the NBA's all-time leader in assists and steals. But he has also been defined by his poise under pressure, never more important than during the postseason. Every game seems to mean everything, and you go home and it stays on your mind, and people talk about the pressure increasing, but I, I think it's, it's not a pressure where you're feeling nervous, it's more of a pressure where you can't wait for the next one. One of his most crucial challenges came late in Game 6 in the 1997 Western Conference Finals against Houston. Stockton, three on two, keeps it, tie game. Leading a Jazz comeback, Stockton would score 13 points in the last three minutes. None more dramatic than the game's final basket. Uh -oh. Stockton, open three, hit it! John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals! He just, hey, he just awesome. In a crucial situation, John Stockton made the plays to get the Jazz to the Finals. Plain and simple. The Jazz would make two straight finals appearances against the Chicago Bulls. But each time, Michael Jordan and the Bulls denied their championship dream. 
1999 would bring a new test as the Jazz trailed the Kings two games to one. After 15 NBA seasons, Stockton would try to prove that time and younger rivals had not yet caught up with him. John Stockton, 37 years old. Could this be the last hurrah for this great... Facing elimination before a raucous Sacramento crowd, the veteran floor leader calmly rallied his team. Stockton to Malone. Gets it. Vintage. Stockton. But Utah still trailed by one until the oldest player on the court took charge once again in the final seconds. of a second, what a game, John Stockton. Uh, he kept his composure and stepped up. I don't know if it was pressure. I don't even know if that word exists around John Stockton. And the next player on our list is Alvin Robertson, the number seven pick of the 1984 draft. That guy was one of the first true all-rounders. In 1985, that guy averaged, listen, 3.7 steals a game. He was the league leader. In the following season, in 1986, that guy averaged 18 points a game, three steals, five assists, five rebounds, and became an all-star. At the end of his career, we're talking about a four-time all-star. And the next player on our list is Mr. Baby Hook, Kevin Willis, a guy that actually had a comeback at the young age of 44. But in his younger days playing for the Miami Heat and the Atlanta Hawks, that guy was a true definition of a power forward. He had a great baby hook, a high percentage shooter, and a tough defender. Regular season or in the playoffs, it's just, it's like being in, uh, like, like no others, no other arena like this in the, from the history. And, um, the, the, the years of Patrick Ewing and, and, and Charles Oakley and Willis Reed and all these guys. I mean, it just has a, a whole bunch of history and I'm just glad I was able to play in there. Um, it was just a matter of time that I felt my turn would come. And it took a long time, but um, in 1992, um, I'll never forget that Arthur Trish came to me in a shoot around in Milwaukee and said, congratulations, you made the um, NBA All-Star team. And um, it, was, it was just such a great feeling to make it amongst all my peers and the other power forwards in the league and they considered me one of the you know the best that year and um, it was fun. All Stars just one special time and again but it's 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 a, it's a special honor for us. And the next player on our list is Otis Thorpe. I recently had a conversation with a former NBA player and I asked him who's the toughest guy you ever had to guard and the answer that I got was Otis Thorpe. That guy was so powerful and so strong it was almost impossible to guard him. He won NBA championship with the Houston Rockets and was one of the best power forwards of the 90s. The high flying Rockets are fueled by their explosive guard trio and their power by their all-star center Akeem Olajuwon. But ask the Rockets who gives them the right stuff, and they'll say Otis Thorpe. Adds muscle, speed. Otis going to take it inside oh, and jams it good. over the Admiral. Aggressive. I saw it! Maxwell in the middle to Thorpe. Oh! Thorpe went 10 feet in the air to slam that rascal home. He's got some big hands, and he gets going down the middle and puts that baby over his head, and he can just throw it down on anybody. Somebody better turn around, or he's going to take it all the way. Well, one guy on the team, uh, Dave Jameson, right now, he said the way I handle the ball, he just thinks about a nerf ball. Rebound Thorpe. He palms the ball. Looks like it's a ping pong ball on the size of his massive right hand. Well, there's some debate over the size of Thorpe's hand. The there's no question about his ability to use them under the basket. Look at Otis Thorpe. Oh, my goodness. Drives it in, lays it up, misses. Otis Thorpe is right there and slams it home. I think a good rebound is someone who's willing to sacrifice their body. Teammate, he was the best teammate you could have. He would run through the walls for you. Got every ounce out of his talent that was humanly possible. What I admire about him, he just played so hard. He was professional and, you know, he taught me a lot. Percy explodes at the hoop. I was with Jerome earlier today and uh, I was busy, so we bitched. We uh, gave each other a hug and left. And earlier this evening, I get the message. It's a tough time for me right now. Mercy, mercy, Jerome, mercy. The people here, the community, 
and the uh, just the incredible embracement that we got as uh, people, even before basketball players in this community. It's just been a, a, a love fest with the city. I guess I've been transplanted into being an Oregonian. Everybody that I ever played with, and especially here in the state of Oregon for the Trailblazers, I share this you know, award with. It's a team sport. You don't do anything individually. You do it as a team. You win, you lose, you cry, you laugh. But most of all, you enjoy your life and remember the memories. Hey, and thanks for watching this video. We really hope you enjoy our content. And if you'd like to support our channel, you can do these things. First, subscribe to our channel and click the notifications button so you will always be up to date when we upload a new video. And also check out our Facebook page. You will find the link underneath the video. Likes are very appreciated. Thanks a lot.